How are you guys? Oh, Greg, are we ever fine? Just fine? Just, just fine. fine. <laughs> that is honestly the most you're going to get out of us, for sure. What's going on with you guys? Uh, you know. I'm kicking you in the ass or what? Yeah, I'm having an existential crisis that's lasted like three months and I'm over it. <laughs> I'm just working a lot. And Maria's just watching my life flash before my eyes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You've been traveling a, a bit with your fiance, eh? And you guys have been seem to have a good time. What's going on? I'm on a sick leave of absence. That's why I've had the opportunity to do that. Not feeling well. <laughs> I Mentally. have like, um, no, never, but I just have a skin <laughs> condition that I can't, uh, I can't seem to beat and it's just kicking my ass. So I can't work. But. She's got herpes. Uh, yeah, yeah really bad genital herpes of the feet genital herpes of the feet <laughs> those are bunions you'll be fine you'll be fine <laughs> Is that well i'm that sorry is? to hear that like i don't even know what to say like it's okay um, you shower a little more or... <laughs> yeah I'm, you know <laughs> i think maria, there's an ointment for that <laughs> maria needs to stop telling me to shower <laughs> um yeah no it's okay um you have a big day coming up i do i am uh a month and two weeks away from the big day. Yeah, Casey and I are still kind of waiting for our invitation to come in the mail, but... I told you they're in the mail. Uh, mm, all right. I don't think I got yeah. the right address. I sent it to the email. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, because COVID, you yes. never know. Yes. Everything's getting... I think it's at port. Like, they say it's on the boat. Mm, okay. Just coming into you know, Montreal. I've heard the airport's been shutting down. That might be why that boat that got stuck in the canal and then lit on fire or whatever the fuck happened. Mm-hmm. I bet you they were on that. Yeah, probably. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Okay. we'll show up anyway. I'll resend it. Just yeah. show up with Abby. We'll crash it. Yeah, Abby will know where it is. Fuck yeah, we should just hop, hop in the back of the car. What's new with what? you? Prize her. Well, you know, it's been a fucking hectic summer. Um, mm-hmm. It's just been like I, I'm a buddy of mine's getting married. I'm in his wedding. And then uh, doing his bachelor. Like, it's been it's been a good summer. I can't complain about it. It's just been a lot. Like, uh, trying to plan our wedding finally with the COVID shit. And, and work's getting really busy again. And, 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 and standing up in a wedding and doing two suit purchases. And Jesus. paying for a wedding and going on two bachelor parties. It's just a Yikes. lot going on this summer. That's I'm so pretty expensive. drained. How, can you, how do you afford it all? I'm just wondering. Sorry, I need to fix the audio, I think. We're thinking how you afford to have friends. Because we don't have any. So it's cheap for us to live but for people that do have friends how do you afford it i just have one hey you're engaged casey you're gonna have a wedding soon maria's been with a guy for 19 years so that's gotta happen sometimes i'm gonna grow a beard before he proposes I swear to God. she'll murder him before they get married even if he <laughs> proposes they won't get married because he'll she'll murder him is she waiting for the ring no uh i was thinking of just buying her one i was thinking of proposing myself that would be funny how would he take that he, he wouldn't gets angry about it <laughs> i joke about it all the time he's like no no how long have you guys been um, together um eight years in august but who's counting <laughs> not you i'm surprised no. you didn't say down to the last day <laughs> it's been eight years four months and 17 days three hours two minutes and 17 seconds but it's fine mm-hmm. maybe on that 18th second Maybe on the maybe. 10th year, maybe he's going for the big one. Yeah. You see, I think he's trying to outrun his brother who did 12 years. Oh, you got a ways to go then. Bro, just get in the will. You don't need a, mar- a marriage. Just get in the will. Yeah. At what year do you just say, fuck this? It's different for everyone, I think. Fuck this. I, we don't need a wedding or fuck this. I'm dipping. I don't like... I don't know, eight years. I don't like you always see in the movies, like, if he doesn't give me a ring, I'm out of here. Like, yeah, fucking, oh you God. didn't commit eight years to just say, fuck you, you're not putting a ring on my finger. But <laughs> what, at, what, well, at what point do you just say, you know, he's going to be angry, but I'm going to go get a ring? After, after the Netflix special they mm-hmm. air on her, mm-hmm. then, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the ultimatum. Yeah. But thinking, Maria, yeah, I'm thinking maybe the ninth year. We'll see. You should go on ultimatum, bro. That's fun. I would fake my situation just to get on the ultimatum because I would just love to be a part of the drama. I'm too shy. Uh, you'd have your titties out on that camera no if you drank by a pool. Uh-uh. I don't <laughs> believe you. You love attention. Now, only when um, I have my only, lips done. Only, only when I'm comfortable with people. 
<laughs> just you'll be fine. You'll know them for like four hours. You'll be you'll be just yourself after that. Perfect. All right. So am I gonna be on ultimatum now or yeah, we decided. Yeah, we're gonna set that up for sure. Thanks. You're not gonna He's know already that we put you on it. Yeah. <laughs> you're just gonna you're we're just gonna pack your bags for you and send you on your way and find out if you if this guy will finally give you a ring. All right, I'll house it for you. So we watched it together actually. It was great. You just had a big month, Casey. Me wasn't like the month like all about you, or something. Um, I I'm confused because every month is about me, so I'm just not <laughs> sure in what particular. Um, it was Pride Month. Instance, oh that I was like, oh you know, it's no different than <laughs> January, February, March, April, May, and June. Oh, I was okay. also trying to think like, what's my name? <laughs> this bitch. I didn't milk it as hard this year because people are over it. It's not something you can do every year, unfortunately. I did you make a few jokes, um, but I always get what I want anyway, so it's okay. <laughs> have you guys have do you guys have plans for your wedding and stuff going forward now, or are you guys um, have like? Yeah, so we're just gonna elope. We don't want to do the whole shebang. Um, we're doing one event, and it's actually this weekend. And it's just, we're calling it an engagement party, but it's really just um, the only thing, the only instance that everybody will be together. So um, we're kind of going all out for that. And then definitely not doing a wedding. We'll probably just go on a very long trip somewhere. We were thinking Hawaii, but then the more I researched it, the more I realized it could be problematic. So we're just kind of setting on, settling on a destination of sorts. And then we will take all the money that we would have spent on a wedding and just do that and get married, like kind of on site with nobody around. Can I ask what, what's problematic about it? About Hawaii? Yeah. Um, tourism is just like killing their, their resources. Uh, it's not a very fun topic to talk about, but like the local, like residents and the natives to the land are saying like, don't fucking come here. We need water instead of sending all our drinking water to like hotels and resorts mm. it doesn't support their local economy as much as like tourists would like to say it does yeah um Depressing. a lot of people are just being like displaced and like they're literally saying the only thing you can do to help hawaii is not to come to hawaii and i'm like okay that's the easiest thing i could do is just not go god damn it, it's so beautiful would it they is, even but- like would they be sustainable on their own without tourism like how much money does that bring to that island um i mean it's not most of them, I feel both, like maybe? almost live off the island. Yeah, like they just need the resources itself instead of like that's true. You know, so uh, like a lot of people go there to work. It's not necessarily they're like indigenous people working all these jobs and they're getting paid like fairly. It's not like that. They're kind of just, you know, we need we need the water, we need the land, we need our like locals to support locals instead of tourism supporting them and then the money going to the government and then they kind of don't see it and it's like not really a fair situation i'm sure fucking i'm unfortunately that's just the reality i think a lot of places are going to be like that so i'm going to have to research a lot before i actually plan a trip because i don't want to be like a problematic another problematic white person so just trying to do my own you know my own research and be a part of something good what a good person oh my god you are yeah. a straight up savior of the lands <laughs> I, I, it's one Google search away from mm. uh, ruining your life, but like, if you want to, you know, <laughs> be educated, you can. You can It'll ruin everything. <laughs> but. If you Google anything you were going to buy, you could probably, you as a person, could probably talk yourself out of it. Uh, yeah, but then there's like ten other things that I buy with absolutely no research done, so I'm just a perfect idiot. Yeah, good balance. Um, mm. Definitely know that we're going to elope. It's just something that like I feel like is more us um yeah yeah i could definitely see that i didn't see you having a yeah. fucking massive ballroom wedding that'll be that fucking yeah drama queen beside you yeah this bitch. <laughs> she will spend double the amount of money to make the wedding look minimalistic and simple but spend <laughs> the money that it would take to i don't know to make like a normal wedding she'll make it we'll see yeah. what's uh like you, you tropicals the call like that's where you want to be the two of you is somewhere like hot mm-hmm. and beaches and, like that's your shit because i fucking can't stand the sand oh really i i think that's a common thing for a lot of men though just really alex hates the beach just because it's like boring 
like, I, I, I am I am fucking the spokesperson for ADHD and sitting on a beach in the fucking hot does not appeal to me. Like, uh, yes, once I get in the water, I end up having a good time. But then I get out and there's fucking sand in my toes. And I have to be a little bitch and whine, complain about the entire ride home that I can't get it out. It's all that sensory overload. It, it honestly oh, is, yeah. dude. And I fucking feel you. Like, if I wasn't medicated for ADHD, like, that, se- the feeling of sand being fucking everywhere and you're sweating and, like, the sunscreen is sticky on your skin and you can't fucking breathe and you're sweating throughout. It's, like, actually miserable. Um, and I do know what you mean. But, like, I be I love being in the water. And my fiance loves hiking and shit. So somewhere we could do both of those things. Um, I'd rather be in the water than like next to it. I don't understand why people love sitting on the sand and looking yeah. at the water. Uh huh. Like I'd rather be in the water. What about like Brazil? Um, also, we have to fucking realize that like not everyone um, welcomes gay people with open arms. So like I'm looking up. I'm my fucking shit. search has been so filtered. It's like, OK, what countries will I not get hate crime? <laughs> Where can like I afford? Where can I go um, without you know ruining indigenous people's quality of life? This is so not a funny fucking topic because it really does no, sound like it like, sucks. It's really, she's but it's really like Expedia. about everybody else but herself. Expedia, well, I don't want to get you murdered put a on my filter wedding day. on that goddamn thing. Um, so the only location that's safe and affordable and doable is our fucking apartment. So I'll just hire the photographer and we'll get married in our pajamas, I guess. And that's also very us, actually. So we, maybe that's the thing. And we'll just stay here for three weeks and ghost everyone. And we'll just say we were on an elaborate trip that we never actually went on. And we're just here rotting away in pajamas and eating pizza. That doesn't sound so bad. No, it doesn't sound bad at all. Fuck, I'm paying for a wedding right now. I'll take fucking pizza and pajamas. Like, fuck. <laughs> now you're contemplating. You're like, mm, should we cancel the wedding and just do pizza? It sounds Let's like April 2019, for- you know, how you're just fucking rotting away inside. Um, you mean 2020? No, it's 2019. COVID 19. Yeah, it started in like December. Oh, 2020. Yeah, 2020. Yeah, it did start. It just started. Yeah, it started in December in the U.S. But yeah, COVID-19. we were supposed to get married in August of 2020. So like replanning this fucking wedding three times has been like, bruh. Did you have a chance to save up the money? Is there any perk of having it being delayed so much? Like, did you guys get to change anything or like hone in on like certain details that you wouldn't have been able to like? It, did it pay off in any sort of way? No. Fuck. See, like I thought it would have, but I had the money to buy to pay for the wedding originally that year would have been completely fine. Wouldn't have had another person's wedding in the same year. Mm. Um, ended up being a like the fucking shitty part is 2020 and 2021. Our wedding dates that were set for those days were fucking beautiful days. So now right. we're like, oh, we're going to get down to 2022. Finally get this fucking wedding. It's going to rain. Yeah, I mm feel that i'm it's supposed to rain on sunday the day of our engagement party and it's outside and there's no fucking awning there's no tent quick question um is my invite also on the boat um yeah i think actually we did ship it out at that time um yeah also maria's dog i did did eat something yeah that looked like paper like that could have also been it so um anyway it's on a golf course. I think you'll just uh, sniff it out anyway. You're on a golf course every day anyway. I was figuring we'll just now I gotta find out where other. you work. Is that where it is? <laughs> well, just casually. Oh, oh, it's today your party. Oh, four. Shoot my fucking ball into the party. Hello. What a fucking nice. that'd be such an unorthodox way to meet for the first time. Like we've only ever talked over Zoom. Uh huh. Yeah. Walking How on weird. your fucking engagement party. That's a fucking Adam Sandler movie right there. Oh my god! Wow, he is in Toronto. The gay right marriage, is whatever the fuck movie? you want to call it. The gay marriage. What'd you say? The, the gay marriage. Yeah, that's the name of the movie. Oh, but like the marriage, maybe is the gay marriage kind of rude? I didn't know. I was thinking where we're gonna put the golf ball in the cake, the head, the 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 clip art that we're gonna make. It's for the title. Uh, the uh, what's it called? Happy Madison. Happy that's the production it's billy madison billy madison happy gilmore happy, happy gilmore, gilmore. Yeah. <laughs> i've actually never seen any of those fucking movies all no, these classic there's, movies there's, there's the production company but have you seen top gun yeah no. i just went we just went to go see it at the uh, drive-in it's good eh it's okay i don't know i'm not an action action movie kind of gal 
I haven't seen any of them. But I forget the actor's name, but he was sexy. He took his shirt off, and I was like, "Is Miles Teller Tom probably. Cruise?" No, not Tom Cruise. The other guy. What's the other guy's name? Miles Teller. Yeah, that's Miles funny. fucking Teller, Maria. Have, Are you, you kidding? Seen- Okay. Have you seen the movie okay. Project X guy? Yeah, but like his body is like it's probably photoshopped anyway. No, he got pretty know. yoked for so. that movie actually. And the reason but, why I know that is because he could send her a postcard that's completely misspelled, but my fiance would leave me for him in a minute. Mm-hmm. Oh. In a hot minute. She, every time a fucking Netflix thing he's in like two or three movies right now. He's in Top Gun, but there's a couple on Netflix that just came out that he's in too. And as soon as that fucking face comes up on the front of Netflix, really? she's just fucking gung ho to do anything. Yeah. He's just like tall, dark, and handsome, yeah. tanned. Oh. Yeah, see, I'm with Casey. I don't get it personally. I have like a weird type, even when it comes to men. Like, I just, I don't know. I've never had a type, but like, it's, I don't know. Nerdy do you guys have a. Skinny yeah, you, I'm assuming like a hall pass or like cancer list. You know what I mean by that? Cancer like, list. I've never heard it like that, but we've got like a celebrity list. Yeah. Yeah. Like. Like the it could never happen. But if it did. No, mine's like I strategically planned it because I'm like, hey, that person comes to Toronto sometimes to film things. Can can this be my number one on my list? And then I'm like thinking. And, and then we think, how realistic is that um, on a scale of one to zero? It's negative 5,000. With my ego, I feel like I can make it happen no matter what. So like. Good for you. Be confident, bitch. that's biggest flaw. <laughs> um, who's number one? Um, May Martin. Anyone? Nah. She's a stand-up comedian. But. Oh. A Canadian. No. Well, comedians, you could probably get it fucking. What do you camp. mean? You could definitely get into. They're still stance. famous. Yeah, but they're like they're probably like loose. Most but of like, them just like how famous? Like who the fuck is May Martin? Right. Oh my god, what she like has her own Netflix show. She's in like five stand ups in the fucking uh, on Netflix. Everyone she, gets a Netflix deal now. You guys are real close to one. She was. Uh, <laughs> she was on uh, last one laughing Canada. She was like the first one out. Oh, but, like, she's my type. Wait, yeah, I watched like the first bunch of episodes for a laugh out loud. Yeah, the she's blonde, very skinny, short hair. Oh, she, tattoos? No. No. Is she old? No. Then I don't know. Man. Who's your cancer list, guys? Why are you making me feel bad? No, sorry. Yeah, you know what? You're you're you know what? I don't know who the fuck that is, but good for you. <laughs> <laughs> good, she's all mine. I don't think I have one. What the what fuck? What do you Maria? mean? It's not realistic. Who gives a fuck? That's, the, that's point. the point for you guys. I don't, I can't name. I'm really bad with like names. I can't you name. You bitches, I'm totally fucking way word. Maria's fucking crush all of high school is literally McLovin. Oh, McLovin. I'd fuck McLovin. Like, does that fucking fuel what an anger inside of you that fuck? you've never felt? <laughs> this is why I don't take so anything that she says confused. seriously. It's like actually infuriating. No, no. The only thing that really fucks me up is that out of all of the Top Gun, she's like, Miles Teller, you know, he's fucking yoked. And he's like tall, tall, dark, and handsome. And then yeah. fucking McLovin, would you choose a fucking lane? Literally, I want to see what he looks like Bitch now. Has I, no type. If I, he has a cock and a heartbeat, sign I, me up. <laughs> you have a dad? That's my type. I don't. Thanks. Hey, me either, but not not because he died. Oh man. Too far. <laughs> Too far. I want to see. You me. know what? I have the weirdest. I have the weirdest taste in men, Dude, I think. Ew, this is what he looks like now. He looks like actually like a rapist. Oh, Maria. Can you Maria. say that? Well, no, but like you've already done it. Oh my god. What does yeah, he look like Jesse now? Grant, not a fan. You know those child oh, actors that like are cute, are cute kind of like you know, not cute like as That's in like coming a little oh, pedophile, so but cute. Sure. just like you know, no wrinkles and then like <laughs> that's it. <laughs> like she actually has a thing for like pre-pubescent. Okay, I was also 16 and he was like You just 17. said you just said McLovin. Yeah. Now that's so fucking huh? funny. He's an organ donor yeah, too. So. What am I gonna go back in time and fucking what am I gonna grab? What does he look like now? Old? Jesus Christ. Not it. Fuck that picture's funny. Those glasses and everything, they fucking Ooh. casted him so well. Obviously, you've seen the movie super bad. Oh yeah. Such a good movie. Like, he is just like the most basic person. 
He's kind of cute. Oh, he's not ugly. Uh, Why are you fucking shaming me now, bitch? Oh, oh that is, is true. I just thought that's the fucking our... double standards this motherfucker has. I'll show you who Mae Martin is just to see if you recognize her. You yeah. don't recognize her? Oh, I thought she had tattoos. No, fuck, I wish. Oh. Wait, who's Mae Martin? Because I watched the last one laughing. Okay, well, she looks like a serial killer. She's trying to find a good picture of her now. Shut Even the fuck she up. She used all the bad pictures of McLovin. Oh, I know I exactly think- who you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I remember her from that show. Yeah. Um, I got to watch her stand up if you th- if you think that she's funny. It's uh, it's pretty niche, but like you can try. Like, I don't know if like she's not my favorite comedian. Just like who's your favorite comedian? Your pants. Mm-hmm. And Sarah bust the door down. She got no. so mad. That was like our only fight we've ever had was like me talking about a cancer list. And she's like actually actually furious because she's like she's in toronto right now you're strategically planning this conversation and i'm like well <laughs> you you no i like the girl from baywatch which one the girl with like the really blue eyes like the big eyes the new baywatch wait the she's new in a fucking mo- the show i'm watching right now that's weird yeah I and think you can see her tits in that one i think greg is like well enough of you i like the bitch with the big eyes <laughs> no she does have yeah. eyes. she's a brunette right yeah yeah she's in a show i'm watching right now she's a fucking psychopath have you seen her tits in that show yet because you no. do get to see them Baywatch, but you I... get to see them in Baywatch. no you get to see them in the show she's watching right now i can't remember what it's called oh why women kill yeah isn't she like crazy yeah she is. looks like you got a little too much sun there bud yeah you're Fuck, is it that thing. noticeable i am fucking burnt yeah. yeah, you match your red and black painful. pillow. Oh, I can't see. It. Oh, yeah, that's a fucking farmer's tan. Wow, yeah. She's My beautiful. buddy looks at me. He's like, it looks like because of where your burn is and the pant, the pants on the shirt, it looks like you pissed yourself in your tattoo. Oh, oh no. wow. He's not wrong. Yeah. Art is but everywhere. Dad pissed himself, too. So at least we're together. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> life is art and art is life. This girl. Yeah. Her eyes look scary, but like yeah, she's got like a psycho face. A she little. does. She actually got married last weekend. I saw pictures of her wedding in New Orleans, and it was beautiful. Not well, us ripping fuck. ripping each other to pieces on everybody that we said we wanted to fuck. I feel like mine was the least ripped on. Well, she's pretty. I mean, I don't yeah. Know what do you want to say? She's she's not fucking McLovin. <laughs> I'm fucking McLovin. Oh my. <laughs> I have a thing for like nerdy guys, kind of like geeky looking, preferably guys. underage. Apparently, I love when they're like, you know, like you look just think that child actors are cute. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, like, I, you, you guys didn't let me finish. You cut me off. What I'm saying is, you know, when they're cute, when they're child actors and they grow up and then they look creepy, <laughs> they look fucking creepy. <clears throat> That's my type, like Macaulay Culkin or Cully McCulkin, whatever his fucking name is. My Culkin. dyslexia doesn't let me say his name properly ever. And then what's the, the other the brother from Hannah Montana? Like they all look. That like, guy was like thirty filming that. I know, show, and right? now he's like fucking sixty seven. Because <laughs> that's math. No, but like you know, and then they kind of just look fucking weird. Macaulay like, Culkin's kind of, like it was so like I always like you always saw that same picture of Macaulay Culkin where he looked like just like a fucking math addict. Mm. Yeah. And then he went on Joe Rogan. Did you watch? Did you listen to that? Oh no, you're not a big Joe Rogan fan, are you guys? Joe Rogan is the worst, absolute worst celebrity. Okay. Anyway, I like Fear Factor. <laughs> I like Fear Factor. <laughs> anyway, he interviews Macaulay Culkin. Like he, he interviewed Macaulay Culkin now and talked about like Macaulay Culkin's childhood and how fucked up it was, like growing up as a child actor and just how fucked like Hollywood and the system is as like taking care of the kids that are in child acting and how fucked his parents were pushing to him yeah. to make more money and are you fucking crazy? You know what the ideal Trauma. situation is? Not being a child actor, but having a very talented dog or cat that would be cast in movies that they pay for. And then like you're Airbus? just like their owner who would then probably they pay them, right? Well, yeah, they get, they get paid. So your job is to take your dog to fucking auditions and shit. And you just cash the paycheck for having a cute, well-behaved, trainable dog, and you're not hurting anybody unless 
you know you're not getting paid as much as kid as you would for your kid yeah but i'm saying you're not exploiting them you know a dog would fucking love it probably but what do you think the conditions are on set for a dog probably very very minimal like considering a person needs like i don't know mental breaks where an animal they probably just think oh whatever give it some food and water i think it's it. you'll probably never watch a dog movie ever again I don't like watching them because they're always sad and they always have golden retrievers and I had a golden retriever growing up and she died and it's Marley very and sad. Me. Marley wow, and Maria's me up. childhood dog is growing up. McLovin is no longer an underage child. I, Getting old is the worst. <laughs> Dogs die and your cute little child actors <laughs> turn to pedophiles. What a bad day God, for me. Damn Maria. it. <laughs> they can't get any worse. Hey, McLovin beats Alex. What? Fair game. How does McLovin beat Alex? Like to asking me to marry. For asking my hand in marriage. (laughs) McLovin (laughs) might actually ask first. No, she doesn't want him anymore now that he's grown up. Creepy looking. (laughs) Do you guys want kids? Uh, Yes and no. Like I, I think I do, but not now. Not anytime soon. What about you, Casey? I want to focus on myself for the rest of my life. I don't think she I... needs a lot of work. <laughs> no, I just, uh, I would rather just be like the rich aunt who like could have them on her own terms and like babysit whenever I want or whenever they need me, but not um, whenever I'm like occupied, you know, like they just take up so much of your, sh- your fucking space in your <laughs> womb. Like it just, not for me, but I'll babysit them and like get the child's uh, admission to like Wonderland and like be that fun aunt for the day um, and then take them home and they can shit their pants in the comfort of their own bed that I don't have Just to clean. Just like you do. Yeah, well, I'm saying you can't do two, you know what I mean? Like you can't do <laughs> you two can't both of us. Like, no. Let's shit ourselves in our own beds, okay? Yeah, so. Thank you. Did you Nothing ever want me. kids or this was always your opinion on it? Uh, it's recent. You should see her with like small children. It's fucking hilarious. It's weird. She's like, I have, I don't want anything to do with you. Don't touch me. Um, I just never, me. I don't know. I was not how to play with you. Was never around it. Um, just never appealed to me. I thought I was going to have to do it when I was with my ex-boyfriend. Cause like it was important to him and his family. And I was like, yeah, okay, I can do it. You guys are like going to support us. Like you're going to take the kid when I need you know, a vacation and shit. And I was like, we can do this. Um, but when that ended, I was like, wow, this is great. Like, I don't have to have a kid anymore. I'm kind of like relieved. Not that I was going to be forced. Kids? No, we're both impartial. So that means it's not going to happen because mm-hmm. you have to spend like 50 grand just to fucking have the thing in you when you're, you have two, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. uteruses, uter- uteri. It Uter- doesn't just happen. Uteri. <laughs> Sounds like a delicacy. Yeah. Yum, <laughs> yeah. yum, yum. Yum. <laughs> <laughs> so n- not for me starving if uh <laughs> if maria had kids though like i'd be a good like she's already like that with clover anyways my dog yeah like i feel like i have a dog because i take care of her dog so often and i feel like that would probably be the case with a kid i just don't want to have to fucking do its taxes and pay for its school and like wipe its ass um not in that order but um... <laughs> and then after you do the taxes and pay for the school <laughs> Then you wipe their asses. And then they suck on my titties. Like, there's literally not enough time in the day. <laughs> this is too much. Um, oh what about you guys, though? Is that in your plan? Yeah, I, I've, I've had so many ups and downs with it. Like, Kristen wants kids, like, for sure. She's had her, like, ups and downs with it, too, just because of how I looked at it. Like, my thing was, is, like, <clears throat> if I don't have kids, I know my cousin's not. And if he doesn't, the heart name's done with us. Yeah, it's done with me and my cousin, and that's just, that's not like it's that crazy for me to continue going because if I don't want to have kids, I don't want to have kids. But I want to have money and free time, and like right now, I don't feel like I have enough time to do fucking anything a day, let alone take care of a little fucking idiot like me. Right? Yeah. Like if it that's comes out anything like me, I am not gonna take it well. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think I don't think like ADHD or any of that stuff is like hereditary. I think it just like happens. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it's more common than not. Well, it's very common because I feel like almost every millennial has something wrong with them now. I uh, I feel you, though, on the money, though. Like, it's a terrible time to even exist for us, and we didn't have a choice. So, like, if we could take a minute and actually plan a little bit uh, more thoroughly than maybe our parents did, I feel like, you know, 
they, they'll do nothing but thank us for that, whether they exist or not. Like the, if the, you know, difficult conversations are being had and like the thoughts are being thought of before, you know, you can put yourself in this situation. I feel like that's the best case scenario. Yeah. Um, Cause there's a lot of terrible things happening and there's a lot to consider before bringing something into this yeah. shitty ass world, but also just like finances, like what the fuck? My argument is gas is 182. Okay. My argument <laughs> is that my parents are old like my dad turned 70 this year um, because they had me, like my sister and I late. Like my dad was 46, I think when, when my sister, when I was born, he was like, I was so fucking close. My mom was 37 to getting out alive. And now 37 isn't old to like have a child, but because my parents are older and I'm thinking like, yeah, 37, I could probably have a kid at 37. That's another like 11 years. So I don't know if my parents are making 11 years. <laughs> Why do you need them around? I just, I think they like just long for this, this grandparent role. And I want them to have that, but also I'm not ready to have kids yet. So I'm like, Ooh, well, one day I will, I think I just don't, Ooh, I just don't want kids now. I just don't, I would never not suggest making a decision like that based off of other people's desires well no no, no. Oh. it's not that's not why i would have kids i that's literally just said i'm not gonna have kids now but i just feel bad like they definitely long for that and i can see why parents always like give me grandkids give me grandkids oh, yeah. parents like, are whatever. a big influence i think my mom literally could not give me a fuck yeah. she'll probably pay me to not have kids <laughs> um Oh, so that's me. a great financial opportunity but like she's never asked me or at like put any sort of pressure and I do get that like that would be stressful you don't want to let your fucking mom down but like well I don't, it's not letting down I just I, I I think they see their friends and a family having those experiences with grandkids and it probably makes them sad because my sister and I are like ooh, no. maybe 10 years from now and they'll be like well I'll be dead yeah. so don't even bother yeah. Well, the crazy my mom's thing, 63. like, she's got some like left. What holds me back uh, right now, like, it's not the financial, it's not like the time. It's just the fact that, like, I don't want, like, I want to be able to. <clears throat> if tomorrow I was like, you know what, I think there's a better opportunity for me in life and happiness not being here, moving to fucking, I don't know, Alabama. <laughs> definitely not Alabama. You are definitely the Alabama type, Greg. Oh my Go God. for it. <laughs> Moving Actually, out you could to probably BC marry Kristen or... and your sister, so that might work. Oh my God. <laughs> you did it, bro. There's so many other uh, cities. In Alabama I know. State. Well, I was gonna say Austin, Texas. <laughs> I like Austin, Texas. Yeah. Okay. Well, you I, can't go back in time. I mean, I you should have went there. Out, but okay, you I should have said that. <laughs> um. Anyway, I want to like I I for a long time I've wanted to just move. I'd rather like for some reason in my head it's just like pursue something I really want to do, take the leap, put all the pressure on myself to perform when I move somewhere to become successful on my own without anyone else around me. And, and I don't know when my life, if something's going to happen where I'm like, you know, I just want to pack up my shit and fucking move and try and pursue something that would make me happier than what I'm doing right now. And having a kid in my mind, I know that you can do both, but in my mind, when I have a kid, it's just like life stops, like, not life stops, but for the first little while, like, what the fuck are you really doing? Like, you're having a kid, you're all your money, all your time, all your energy goes to it. It's it's just it's such a fucking commitment. And I yeah. just I don't know. Sometimes I have the it fear that I don't want to do it. That's why I feel like I can't fathom it just because like lifelong. I'm not like scared of commitment, but to think that I essentially lose like probably 15 years out of the gate of my life of could like potentially be the prime of your life to to um just that one thing and I know a lot of people say like the joys of parenting will outweigh the you know yeah yeah the whatever but they, it's just, they can say that they don't cry themselves to sleep at night I just they- feel like in the with the dealt of the hand that we got dealt as this generation like we haven't even started living our lives yet because we can't because we can't we're barely staying like afloat, whether it's financially, you know, fucking mentally, all these other things like that are factors. I just feel like I haven't done enough with my life yet to be like, yeah, OK, I'm I'm willing to literally crumple up and throw away the next 15 years of my life 
because I would love to just like move to a different province tomorrow and just worry about how do I get my cat from here to there instead of, oh my God, does this kid need different shots and a doctor over there? And do I need to, you know, get them a different, whatever the yeah. fuck school? Um, I yeah, can't even begin to, to think about that or want to think like, no, it's not I can me. barely do that for myself. Yeah. I always tried to like plan it out. Like I always wanted to be married and start having kids at the age of 30. That was my, always my goal because my mind went to, if I have kids at the age of 30, then by the time I'm sick, like by the time I'm like 55 and I want to retire, there's a very good chance they're the fuck out of my face. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. but I like I also don't like, I don't want to regret it. Like, I don't want to end up being 50 and being like, I wish I would have had a, a kid of my own. And I wish I was watching him grow and play sports and do the things that I did as a kid and teach him mm-hmm. the skills that I learned in life. And it's just such a fucking up and hill, up and down battle. And Casey makes all the good points on the fact that it's very hard to stay afloat in today's society at our age to not have any fucking equity in anything. Cause you can't buy a fucking asset cause they all cost too much fucking money. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it just seems like the fucking losing battle. And like I make good money and I fucking still, I still have a hard time justifying doing stuff for myself sometimes. Cause I'm like, I should be trying to save every penny I have to try and finally get in the market or is the market going to crash or how is it going to ever go down in price? Like, are we going to hit a recession? Am I just a fucking idiot for buying something? You know what? So, okay. So I work with, I feel like for some reason in my industry, it's very much half and half of like people who have had kids and people who have, have not, Uh, at least in my workplace, like half the girls don't have kids and they're married and they're like, past the age of having children in their like 40s 50s um and then the other half have kids or maybe just had one kid really young or you know are just having kids now so it's really interesting to see I have one friend she's like die hard child lover like she that sounds so bad <laughs> <laughs> so like she you love children we have the you same taste so, in voice, so that's why we get along so well um <laughs> no she she like is obsessed with babies she she's a doula she loves kids and babies and families and she just wants to have like 10 kids but um so she's just like so much of this like positive mother kids are the best thing ever amazing she shows videos of her kids all the time and i'm like oh nice you need to ask for my consent i love i love i mean like her kids are fucking (laughs) so cute so i love it i don't want to see your fucking but then there's the other half of like you know my my other co-worker she's like in her 50s her late 50s her and her husband they go away every single weekend for like two days just go off like two hours away camping they come back they go like all over north america camping all the time like they don't have a dog they just pick up and fucking go whenever they want and then i have another co-worker who's in her late 40s or early 50s and she doesn't have kids because her husband didn't want any and she thought she didn't want any and now she regrets it and she's like so depressed because she wished she had kids and now she doesn't have kids so you're just watching everybody else's life and i'm and like which one do i choose yeah like i fucking roulette yeah. i personally don't think i will look back on my deathbed um i definitely don't want to be on a deathbed i just want to like go quick but if I were on a deathbed and I had time to reevaluate my whole life, I don't think I would ever regret doing things that only I wanted to do with my wife for the rest of my life. Like dedicating all of your time and your life to somebody else just seems so weird to me. Cause it's like, when you die, it's just you that dies and you die with all the experiences that you had. And if all those experiences are just doing things for that other little kid, I get why people might think that's fulfilling. But to me, it's like, almost seems like, if I could be doing more things that like makes myself happy and more like experienced and like, you know, joyous. And that might be for your friend or whatever, having kids. But for me, it's like going on a fucking hike or sleeping all day or like, you know, doing all the things that only I want to do with my like partner instead of um, like worrying about being somewhere because the kid needs to, you know, have fucking social skills. You got to put it in classes and shit. So it's like, you're doing all that for somebody. I just like, it seems so selfish, but like as a woman with a body who can make a kid or not, um, I would like to be selfish in that sense. Cause it's like not fair for them if I'm not all the way in it. 
So um, I don't That's think true. I could promise them that. So I'm like, fuck it. I'll just do me. And it's probably um, going to be a very lavish life. It's going to be great. Can't wait. I just really enjoy taking care of people, I think. So I, I. Be a PSW, I, bitch. I, I'm not going to wipe your ass on a grown man's ass. Okay. I'll wipe a baby's <laughs> ass if I have to, but I'm going to wipe that's where my fear of having a kid comes in because I've watched my cousin's kids fucking sneeze and they have this gross thick shit on their fucking face and I am ready to pass on like I'm ready to fucking call it quits because I cannot handle it in the slightest and they're always like it'll be different when it's your kid no it won't bitch you think no. I want that no. fucking at any time I don't give a fuck if i made it i literally wouldn't even share a bag of chips like they have sticky mucusy fucking fingers all the time they smell and we have to what share a bag of fucking goldfish i don't fucking think so you are on your own i'm not touching anything you touch (laughs) and then putting it in my mouth like you're talking to two people who are like germaphobes very like very picky with (laughs) who we interact with and what how we just like carry ourselves we're just like no we can't do i don't know why germs boogers <laughs> i see no. you having a kid and then like for the first three years of its life you go through like 900 reusable gloves like you're just fucking everything yes. you hand it it's like on like one of those like claw like hook like the picker up things you're it would be fucking- like a reverse bubble boy like i'd be in a bubble serving the kid like in that situation <laughs> Um, like I, and she oh, wants to babysit my nauseous. children. <laughs> almost makes me nauseous. Yeah. I do have an yeah. She's babysitting your kids. They're at Wonderland. They sneeze and mucus is on their face. So just, she just calls she you. Calls hey, they're at Wonderland. They'll be done in a couple hours. I, had <laughs> yeah. to I just put it on infinite loop on behemoth. They should be fine. They didn't meet the height restriction, but they, I paid the guy enough. They're we just the, going we push the day. seats way down there. They can't feel their thighs. It's fine. <laughs> I would literally need a hazmat suit for every waking day of that child's life. And I just think that's not, you know, environmentally friendly. So I, I can't answer do your question. No, the, I won't be having children uh, <laughs> or be around them. No, I general. cannot do poop and shit. Like, you're like, you're so you, don't be so soft. Like, fuck you, Karen. The worst, you fucking <laughs> fuck the shit. You. The worst part is when people are like, um, Oh, you should, uh, you should try having kids. It's so much harder, like blah blah blah. Or it's like, yeah, it's um, literally probably the hardest fucking thing you ever do in your life because you can't. Yeah, not, but you can't quit. But then they you keep can't quit. They keep having the kids, and it, they're like complaining about them all the well, time. You know why? Because oh, I, I haven't slept since I was twenty-seven. I'm like that bitch. That's you. Yeah, that's your doing, that's not on me. You. I sleep like a fucking baby with no baby. It's great. Yeah. Call her at noon. Just woke up. <laughs> Marks. Ah, tequila. <laughs> I, I can't. I have to go to fucking jamboree. Like, ew, I don't want to be friends with that either. To be honest. I got a Lamaze class. Can't talk right now. I got four kids loaded in the minivan. There's chips everywhere. I'll call you. Oh, my God. Or I'll swing by. I could use an extra set of hands. Oh, no, I'm going through a tunnel, bitch. Bye. I'm not. Aww. It's not me. No, I think I want kids. <laughs> yeah, I After can definitely in see conclusion. <laughs> That I think I want after this whole conversation, I thought we were talking each other out. I thought we were all on the same page, and then you ruin it because they're just they are cute. Little babies are cute. Get a cat. I haven't wiped an ass, a baby's ass, so like I don't know the brunt of the diarrhea, but like they are cute, and you know, you make it with your body, like that's so magical. Holy shit! And it's like me if I could clone myself yeah that's the problem people i love do myself people I would have so no. many so uh, such a good time oh my god people do it because they want more of them and that's fucked the way I that want you more of me who doesn't want more of me the me way, the way i don't want more of you yourself. you don't want more of me no i want less of you bitch the way you talk about yourself makes me want to throw up honest me? to god I love me. If I could have another one of me, why the fuck would I? And she didn't realize like nobody's agreeing with her. Yeah. How fun. But like half Alex. Like I listen. Just, that's a fucking nightmare. I'm not even gonna sugarcoat just, it. That's, that's the most fucked. ADHD dyslexic ass baby ever. It sounds it sounds hairy. Yeah. Actually, it's, you know what? I'm the hairier one. So that's pretty sad. Oh, I you were included in the 50 yeah, he, he said it takes two to tango, <laughs> and he he evaluated that before making she that said statement. Okay, she okay. said you're gonna have a mustache before you're engaged. <laughs> and then she will. You know, have you seen those monkey babies? 
What? Those babies born full on hair, like everywhere, like they're furry babies. It's like a thing that babies ha- are born with sometimes. I'm sorry, they're called monkey babies? No, but if you Google it, <laughs> probably not baby not. monkeys, but monkey babies. If you Google it, I swear to God, you'll see. There's vi- I saw a video one time and this baby had like arm hair, chest hair, back hair, all the way up to its face. <laughs> and it was like, then I closed my family um, photo album and I was just over it for the rest <laughs> of the day. And then I turned off the home video. <laughs> <laughs> Maria, you Googled monkey babies. Those were actually monkey babies. <laughs> <laughs> Baby monk. Wait. <laughs> You idiot. <laughs> okay. Wait, there's baby monkeys? <laughs> no, they just they have small monkeys. I thought oh, they God. come out full size. <laughs> no, so, I'm serious. It's like a condition or something. And then it falls off. Fair. Oh, really? Yeah, that's like they weird. shed it. It's disgusting. Oh my god, it fucking <laughs> mucus and poop. So wasn't do you want enough. children or no? <laughs> Now he now he fucking sneezes. He's got boogers on his face, shits his pants, and his fucking hair's falling off. And he needs a weekly fuck chest fuck. wax. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be your fucking kid. Now that you say all that bullshit, oh, no. and you, it's going to be you because karma is an absolute <laughs> fund and it's going to catch up to you. You know what? <laughs> At least I got the resources. Yeah, I she's hope- like, I got a wax pot in every fucking room. We're, get- we're ready for a monkey oh, yeah. baby. I hope I have another one of me fucking thing that comes out looking like a gorilla. Uh, not it like that. You don't look like fucking, a gorilla. Like a white claw and Lululemon tights on asking like it's fully hairy. Mom, how old do I have to be to get Botox? And you'll, you'll say what? The answer is when you can pay for it yourself. Oh. Well, in this economy, bitch. Never. Not happening. <laughs> Anyway, you think it's sure. bad for us our kids are fucked yeah <laughs> yeah there's not gonna be a planet so she thinks she's having a monkey kid but she's not like mm-hmm. there's gonna be no planet mm-hmm. actually you better hope it's a monkey kid you might have a better chance of survival in the yeah, probably. Yeah, maybe. when the world lights on fire you could live in a tree for free oh my goodness mm-hmm. i remember uh the first time i had you guys on we talked a lot about comedy like you guys said that you guys would had wanted to do some open mic nights or wanted to try to do stand up and you guys started the podcast you guys still have that outlook? No, maybe. Eh. Uh, yes and no, but I'm glad that you're doing it from what I understand, because that is almost like I'm living through you and that's good enough for me. Are you doing stand up? Yeah, I did my first one a couple weeks ago. Did you have? Also, where is our fucking invitation? Would you want anybody else there? Yeah, we would be like, ha <laughs> ha. That's exactly what I didn't want. So yeah. I, I literally originally I, I knew I wanted to do it and wasn't t- I didn't tell anyone that I was doing it or that I had the date plan that I had everything set. And then I just and then I told people that I was doing it. Wouldn't give anyone where it was or when it was or or anything. Wasn't even going to let Kristen come with me. I just I wanted to try and make a room of 60 people laugh, knowing that I made them laugh, not like pity laughs or. Or people only understanding my jokes because they knew the context of it because they knew the people that were involved in it because they were a part of my life. I didn't mm-hmm. want that. I just wanted to try and make 60 fucking strangers laugh at the shit I had to say. Can we ask you how it went? It went well. Like, it, I didn't kill. I didn't fucking murder that. I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to be a fucking professional stand up in like two years. <laughs> like, it, it wasn't like that. I was nervous as fuck. Like, I didn't like the yeah. three days leading up to it. I had like some issues sleeping. I was just like fucking yeah. so nervous to just kind bomb terrifying. for fucking. 10 minutes but i gotta tell you right now like anyone that would ever want to pursue it or either both of you like it is so everyone is so there for you like like people pay to go in but there's always a pro that ends the night so like no matter what they're gonna go through these comedians who are very new to it but they're always gonna get a pro at the end so and like they sit there they eat they drink and they're very like forgiving everyone gets clapped for everyone gets a good entrance good exit you have seven uh, five to seven minutes to, to say your spiel i show up and i walk into like you guys obviously know what a green room is from listening to like podcasts and comedians mm-hmm. they had a green room for us and it just felt so fucked i was like i don't fucking like I don't deserve a room why am i not just <laughs> sitting with everyone else like why am i sitting in a special fucking room so anyway i sit in this room and like the comedian starts showing up some some guy i met right away uh he uh i walked up and just introduced myself and he's like uh 
yeah, it's my, this is my second time doing it. I was like, what about you? I'm like, it's my first time. I'm like, how'd the first time go? He's like, it was last week. And I really thought that I had to come out and just like shock the crowd because he was Asian. He said, he's like, I'm Asian. And I wanted like, people probably expected something out of me when I first walked up to the mic and I wanted to give them the complete opposite just to come instantly shock them. And I was like, Fuck yeah. ballsy as fuck. But he had this like huge, like intro spiel that he wanted to say that just ended so aggressively. And he said that he walked up to the mic and was so fucking nervous that he forgot the first like four sentences of this spiel. And all he walked up to the mic and yelled to 60 fucking random people was. I love when girls suck my dick and eat my ass. (laughs) And then he like kind of panicked. And he's like, I stood there frozen for a couple seconds and realized that I'm going to have to fucking have an uphill battle for six, <laughs> six minutes and 58 seconds. Fuck, man. So he's like, I had a hard time getting it back. And it was really tough. Like he did really well the second night, which is really fucking cool to see like, the guy's yeah. second time being up there. I asked him like, like, what do your parents think about? It? He's like, they don't even know. Like, I don't tell them that I'm doing this. Like, they would totally not approve. Like, my family's very like um, traditional. Like, traditional yes so he's like well i haven't told them yet i'll wait till i've done it a lot more and i'm open to talk about it i'm like i i don't i don't understand that i've never had to deal with that which but it just fucking sucks but i added him on facebook and we're gonna start or on instagram we're start doing some open mics but anyway what i was saying is there's there's a couple guys that have been there it was their first night it was me and one other guy there's a handful of them that have done it twice and then a probably three or four that have done it fucking 20 30 times that have never actually pulled up a deal they, they're still doing open mics and then a pro finished it I went up after two people fucking bombed like like I was sitting in the crowd at this point because I was sitting with Kristen just watching these other comedians and I watched this guy go up and like I'm trying to like put myself in their head because I'm like I I, I was like giving the pity laughs like trying to like Mm -hmm. I don't know get into what they were trying to say like the first guy was just like calling himself poor for like seven minutes and it was just like almost upsetting. The next guy walks up and he's you almost feel bad. Like, here's a task that had around. Here's a 20 fuck. Yeah, he's like Cheer I'm, up, Bucko. He's like, I'm new poor. My parents were always old poor. Like, I'm the first one to have a car and finish high school. What the fuck? Like, I'm sorry. Huh? Good for you. Like, yeah. I just like hey to get that GD. Like, <laughs> I'll pick up his tab. Yeah. No, that's the fucked up part. I show up to this event, it's in Kitchener, and uh I, I meet the the owner of the comedy club and i'm just like introducing myself and telling him why i'm there and what i want to do and what i want to speak about and uh he's like no worries like go grab a seat grab yourself something to eat and some uh some drinks so i order a rum and coke and he asks what Kristen wants and or he asked me if i wanted food i said no i don't want food he's like the all the talent eats and drinks for free and i'm like the fucking talent i don't even open well, my fucking I'll... mouth yet you're about to be disappointed that you supported this motherfucker like, <laughs> that's hilarious but you're going to be sorry that I got the side guac, my friend. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'll take the extra large poutine and uh, oh, don't yes. skimp on the fucking gravy. All right. Mm-hmm. But uh, the it's guy after him bombed. And I'm just like, I know I'm next because I saw the order before I went up. I knew who I was following. And so now two people have made a room of 60 people go dead fucking silent. And so I'm nervous as fuck because I'm like, fuck, like. It seemed like they approached stuff very well, but every single person that went up before me was was saying like one liners like they would like tell a little bit of a joke like that had nothing to do with like uh, it just would always have something to do like being poor or something like it never was like a story about their life. All of my jokes are stories of my life. Like I tell the fucking hardships of my life and try and make it relatable funny wise. Mm -hmm. So I dive into it and I start telling my jokes and I'm probably like two minutes in and I haven't really gotten a decent laugh. I've gotten like some giggles or whatever people understand what i'm going through and then i fucking told one about my mom not taking my like we got after my dad passed we got on an elevator she said just the most outrageous fucking thing to actually i'll tell you i don't really care my mom got on the elevator like five minutes after my dad was removed from life support like this she's obviously dramatic as fuck she walks into the elevator and is what is presumed to be like a 90 year old woman is standing with us in the elevator and i'm just explaining like there's only two fucking things you should do in an elevator one say thanks for holding the door Two, shut the fuck up for some reason the only thing in my head that's going on is i'm thinking about this thing plummeting into the ground whether or not there's 30 floors or one floor and i don't want to have a conversation with you i don't know who the fuck you are my mom looks at this fucking woman and i i fucking kid you not i'm not making this up she says we put my husband down today and i'm like 
I like, oh almost, like I fucking cranked my neck to my fucking sisters, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, we didn't just take a fucking golden retriever to the vet, mom, you <laughs> bastard. I'm like, and then this fucking lady's looking at her like, I don't know whether or not to tell you I'm sorry for your dog loss or your husband. Like, was he spayed like, and neutered? <laughs> yeah, she looked so fucking scared. But when oh, I explained that God. as the actual like full bit that I wrote, it got a really good laugh explaining the how it happened. That's hilarious. And then immediately I was comfortable. Like at first I was kind of just standing there with the mic, didn't really do a lot of moving around. A lot of my jokes are like me, like being loud and like acting it out and like uh, having a lot of body language to it too. And that finally broke me out of like being super uncomfortable because I got that yeah. first laugh and then it went pretty well. I missed a joke that I wanted to say, but overall, like I didn't bomb. I had some good laughs. The owner pulled me aside after with another guy it was first night and just said like, you guys both did really fucking well. What looked at me and said, you're really confident. Your jokes are good. Keep working on the material and learn yeah. different ways nice. to present it. So it was, it was really, it felt good. It was like addicting. Like the first I mean, you one, need like the validation as shitty as it is to say, like mm -hmm. that's what keeps you going and keeps like, makes you keep wanting to, to do it. Like the laugh is enough validation to keep going. And then also that dude like saying, um, you know, his, his kind words to you after the show is like what makes it or breaks it. And I, I would need that too. Like, I feel like I like, always laugh when people like when I'm at open uh, mic nights or like even just kind of amateur comedy nights, I always laugh anyway. And sometimes I can't distinguish if it's like, because I found it funny, entertaining, reliable, or if it's like, a pity laugh pity. <laughs> but either way it's not like forced it just like happens like so maybe like I don't know I'm I would be worried about that as well like I'd be worried about people that I know you know showing up and laughing just because they know that's their cue mm -hmm. so like to do it you know the way you did it with no one really there is huge mm -hmm. um but also fucking terrifying like I know I would literally be the person to forget my whole bit and then just talk about how much I'm sweating and smell bad. Like I, that's me. And that that's, sucks. But like, I think that you'd be able to get it. Like, do you want, do you know, Christina Pazinski? Yeah. Do you listen to her? What she look like? That's She's Tom, Tom Segura's, Segura's wife. wife. Oh, okay. Yeah. Her stand up special out now is like all about that shit. Like being a fucking shitty mom and like <laughs> all this shit. She's like, I don't know how the fuck all you sick bastards do this. Like, this thing is fucking Satan on earth. Like, don't Honestly. look at me and make me feel like I'm a lesser mom than you, Karen. This because I don't give a fuck that my kids running around. With a, like, I don't know. She's just very aggressive and it's just very relatable. But you talk about like forgetting your lines. I fucking show up and I'm sitting in that green room with all these comedians that a couple of them have done it like 20, 30 times. A couple of them have been doing it for fucking 10 years. And every single person in there had a notepad and a pen except for me. Like huh. every single fucking one of yeah. them was sitting around that desk writing their stuff because a lot of them were like one liners. Right. It's so like I didn't write out my fucking stories. I just remember them because remember they them yeah. and put them I in order be to make them transition better. So I memorized it and I was the only fucking person that. So I'm sitting there. I'm like, fuck this. I'm going to go sit with Kristen out in the crowd because I don't want to like this is making me more nervous. Like, am I that unprepared? They're like all these people have a fuck. They walked up to the mic stand with a fucking notepad. I'm like, I know yeah, this I is open but it's mic, not going to but... be like um, natural. And like, if it's not natural, then it's not going to be relatable. And like, if it's not relatable, it probably won't laugh unless it's outrageous. So it's like, I wouldn't even, yeah, psych yourself out with the, yeah. with all that, you know, last minute preparation has never helped me anyway. I either know it or I don't. And like those last like five minutes aren't, I like, aren't gonna. Help. I also just think like, it would be it's it's easier to get a laugh i think if you can almost imagine yourself talking to a group of friends or something like that you can say oh my god yeah that crazy shit happened to me and this is blah blah, blah, blah and then explain the whole story with like a little embellishment a little whatever like that if you if you are like i guess a funnier person that's just what you do naturally i think is sort of just get people's attention and you like when people laugh so then you kind of like do a little more, some facial expression, some hand gestures, you know, some jazz hand. <laughs> I, a little I bit think, of jazz hand. I, I think leading up to the night, there was two ways it could have gone. And I knew that I wanted to do it more than once, regardless, just to give myself a fair shot. 
if it, if I completely bombed after being that nervous and literally got zero laughs, like a couple of the guys did, I like, it would have been fucking hard to go back. Like mm-hmm. I had, I had seven minutes of material that I truly thought had some really good jokes and some ones that I thought, you know, we'll see how they hit, see if I can work on them. But if none of them made it through, I'd be like, it's not like, for me. I just, I just been like, fuck, like, I know I'm nervous, but I can't even fucking get one goddamn fucking laugh. Well, you know, you never know until you try. And if they, that was their time to try. I mean, at that point I'd be like, Ooh, I should probably just stick to my day job. You guys should do it. Mm, I, I want to, I, I gotta say, okay. you. Go I think it's, it would take like a near life, a near death experience. Sorry for me to like wake up and actually try things that I've always wanted to try. Like until then I'm just going to be the complacent person uh, in that sense. Like, and it sucks, but I need something that like will actually push me probably like literally physically push me on the fucking stage or else I won't do it. I will talk myself out of anything. Um, I can be that. Even if I know it could be good for me, (laughs) even if it's just something like I want to do before I die, I feel like I could push that off for so fucking long until like i lose a limb and then i make it part of a bit that's the only way i would like well like i would need something you don't think that you've gone through enough adversity and bullshit in your life now to just say fuck it let me tell you casey could write a fucking book on her life and it would be the size of a fucking bible (laughs) and she's only 26 no she's 25 still but is funny like it not in an aspect of like someone's shitty stories of how fucked up their life has been is funny but hurt brings out the I don't give a fuck out of people. It, I do like, have that. I just like started grasping that in like my normal everyday life. And I'm just starting to become like the person who genuinely doesn't give a fuck about people, uh, yeah. people's opinions, especially of me. But like, fuck, I hear that just starting now. So I'm like, you know, it's a thought in the back of my mind all the time. But like, it is true. You know, if I'm talking about like my life, I wouldn't need to really remember things that I had written because like it genuinely did happen to me and it genuinely is fucked and it's very funny and very entertaining so it's like that is to my benefit but like I don't know if I would ever actually I don't know I need to be like actually put on a fucking stage like somebody will need to pick me up and put me on a stage in order for me to do it I think I'm like almost the opposite I I have no fucking shame so I will go on a stage and sing my fucking heart out for karaoke and I will go out there and not give a fuck about what everybody else is thinking because I'm having a good time so but I just don't know if I have the material like I can't just I'm more of a witty quick type of person I can't just like make up a like I can't think of it in my head and think okay this is what I'm gonna say this is funny because if I think it's funny people like I feel like other people won't think it's funny if I'm planning it almost you okay, know so Maria, like, the Maria worst part goes, is like having to explain it it's like oh my. and i also am horrible at telling stories the worst. so yeah. i will go on for ages and ages and then i'll never get to the fucking punchline because i'll just like adhd switch to another topic without even explaining where i started when i first when we first talked and i wanted to stand up too like i legit i do i i second guess myself out of everything all the time especially if it comes like anything extreme or anything like really out of my comfort zone i fucking get in my head for days in advance and it really took me sitting down i had wrote fucking every every like time something fucked up happened to me or something i thought was funny or something that someone said that i thought was just outrageous and i figured i could swing it in a funny way i wrote it down in my notepad and it wasn't till seriously like i don't know three weeks ago maybe a month ago that i finally said fuck it like I literally just, I didn't even have my material ready. I didn't have seven minutes. I didn't even put any of them in order to have like transition to each other Mm -hmm. or have like a topic. When I called the guy in Kitchener and said, I want to sign up for this open mic. Like I was signed up and then realized I put a time frame on myself that I I have to get it done. That's probably the way I would do it too. Like commit and then figure it out. Because if you try to figure it out and then commit, you'll procrastinate because you can. So I'm proud of you. I, I like wish I could have supported you in a way that wasn't me like laughing at your joke and looking around and making other people like laugh. But like, (laughs) I hope that that made you gain enough like experience and courage to do it again. And then like, hopefully every time um, we'll just give you a little bit more um, like confidence and then you'll like be, you know, 
I'll Fulfilled. definitely do it again. And the reason why is because there's no like um, financial burden in doing an open mic. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, like in, in podcasting, like there's a lot of fucking shit that people don't realize that, that it takes to do these things. Like mm -hmm. when it comes to editing and, and, and making them and the equipment to do them, like people don't under fucking stand how much time goes into this shit and like being on the computer and taking time away from other shit. Stand up is so much different. Like you can take as much time as you truly want to do in mastering your material, which I think you would enjoy anyway, but mm -hmm. you don't have to like buy anything. You just fucking show up. And try and make people laugh. You can sign up for as many open mics as you want, whenever the fuck you want. So I might as well keep fucking around with it for years and years until I don't find joy in it. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah, I definitely agree with that. I would be the one to do it and not tell anybody. Oh, um, yeah. I wouldn't even like tell my fiance. I'm like, oh, I'm going out to go for a run. She'd be like, you're cheating on me. <laughs> um, you know what? You know what? I think I would prefer doing almost is improv. Um, yeah. I just feel like that would be so much fun to just like join an improv group and do like improv comedy. I don't know if you've ever been to an improv show before. I haven't. I had never been to a stand up show before I did it. What? I had never seen a stand up comedian live or been to an open mic. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. I still I haven't. I've I only been to the one I was in. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, that's kind of good, though. Like, you're you go in not expecting anything. Like, you're just yeah. like, I don't fucking know what to yeah, expect. Yeah, exactly. So, I was so yeah, new yeah. to the whole thing. I was supposed to see Tom Segura in March. But it's not until November now or October. But um, improv is a good tool just to be comfortable in front of other people and in front of strangers. Also, just to, like make a fool of yourself. Yeah, for sure. Know? And I know that like everyone else people, is doing the same. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people have a hard time like embarrassing themselves. But like you're not you're the one that feels embarrassed. Nobody else is thinking, "Ooh, that's embarrassing. You know, like hardly. Um, I don't I've heard us just talk about people like very rude like that. Like, I feel like we're like hardly though, but hopefully not everybody's as much of an asshole as no, we we're fucking cunts. So, but like, you know, but like I, I'm critical, I think because I'm very critical of myself, but I also don't give a shit. So it's like, it's, you're so complex. A Jekyll and Hyde, maybe perhaps literally no idea. Um, that's something that we should do together. I feel like we don't give a fuck about what people think when we're no, together. No, we shouldn't do it together because we do everything together. And that's why we feel comfortable doing it. Do it together. No, we've done that our whole lives. <laughs> we went so, to that. We fucking, we, I followed her to college because I was like, I want to have friends at college. <laughs> now we're living in the same city. And now we're going to do improv together. It's the most, um, you know, convenient way. We carpool gas is expensive we're best friends anyway we could just buy one bottle of wine oh. it's like i'm duh. convinced again anyways you should you should go to an improv show if you have any around you um they're really fucking funny he probably doesn't even have a fucking shopper's drug mart around him i have an idea okay <laughs> nice <laughs> whoa i just saw my fucking monitor for the first time it got dark in here i yes. look like i'm telling ghost Fuck, stories I, this, is a, this is a ghost story box we have but a I, ring light so tell us something <laughs> yeah i do have actually like lighting now when i fucking podcast in my living room now so i'm not setting that up um one last thing for you guys what happened with the podcast just too busy too much going on like is it ever coming back we were waiting for this one um okay should i just start okay no because you'll never finish no 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 um can i cut you off it basically when? yeah yeah okay. go ahead so it basically just got too much for us. I think we started it almost three years ago. Yeah. And it just, we've changed a lot as humans, as adults, as whatever. You grow a lot in your twenties. I think like you just sure. change so much per year. So we've grown a lot. And like professionally, I think we thought we can't do this anymore. One, because it's a lot of work to do while you're working full time, like really full time all day. And then to commit to doing it to working on the podcast at least two nights a week plus then having a social life doing your fucking chores doing your fucking like taking care of yourself as a person and like your relationships as friends as as you know partners in a romantic relationship as other friends as yeah. you know it's just got way too overwhelming and way too much for us I think and professionally as well we're trying to move forward and be like just advance in our careers and I think we're so raunchy it's normal people 
and through our podcast, we're just also very raunchy and like unfiltered. And I think we don't want people to necessarily find that and think, oh, this is them and that's it. And then judge us on who we are as like a professional or who we are as just like somebody with potential, you know? (laughs) So I think that's kind of just, that's the gist of it. Essentially. It, It got too much and we didn't want to invest any more money. And that was essentially it. Um, for me, I, I'm also going to follow, sorry, my cat found a paper bag and she must lay her fat body on it in the middle of this podcast. That's fine. I can barely hear it. Okay. You're settled. Um, <laughs> I would like to use the same uh, analogy, even as like, for me, not having kids, like if I can't give it the 110% that I think it deserves, then I'd rather not do it at all. And I feel like when you know, we kind of ran its course and then we were kind of like digging for things to kind of talk about and be entertaining over. And that to me kind of like struck something within me saying like, wait, if it doesn't come natural and we aren't doing as good of a job because we don't give it enough time and effort, then it's probably best to just not do it at all. Um, and that's all like, it was just, um, we felt like it just like had naturally kind of expired itself. And we didn't think to just keep going just for the sake of keeping going. Um, But also like, I fucking miss Maria as a friend. So every time like we would hang out, it had to do something with the podcast and it took, you know, that hour or two or three out of our week. And that was the only time like we would see each other or whatever. That's the only thing we'd talk about kind of consumed our friendship which was okay. That's why we started the podcast actually, because we weren't seeing each other that much. And then we thought, what can we do together? Like, let's join a class. Let's do something where we can meet up and like have fun and be ourselves and like just to hang out as friends. And then we thought we're fucking funny. Let's make a podcast. (laughs) It just became too much work. And then that kind of ended up in a product that like something I wasn't necessarily proud of. Um, and that made me want to like stop because I can't put a, a less than, um, you know, it just I less than perfect version of myself and our friendship yeah. out there, like voluntarily. It's just like half assing it. The second that we started doing that, I was like not feeling it. We, sh- I just thought quitting would be better, to be honest. Yeah, I just felt like it started to get more mediocre and we weren't really caring about it. And our social media, like, you have to really be on top of every aspect of having a podcast social media like contacting people for guests and like getting your name out there and thinking of content to to talk about and just like be in it fully and we weren't fully in it because we have so much else going on and we just didn't want to put ourselves fully in it as well so I think once that started shifting then we kind of both were like on the same page and for a while we were kind of just like coasting and nobody wanted to say none of us wanted to say like you want to quit (laughs) because we were kind of just both over it and I think we each knew that about each other as well and it just at some point we just had to be like listen should this just should we just not anymore it was weird and hard but I'm glad we kind of I'm glad we did it it was a little sad I was a little sad I almost cried just because like like I feel like we just created this little thing and like some people were really supportive of us and it just was a little hard because they were also like why did you do that I would love listening to you guys every week and I'm like oh my god well w- we didn't so <laughs> <laughs> oh Sorry. trust me my fiance knew immediately <laughs> yeah oh um but <clears throat> like I don't know I guess my mind went to like I didn't know if something crazy happened between the two of you, you guys weren't talking anymore that's why I no. reached out but I guess my mind went to like people love to listen to you guys and people loved like I just I got it from my viewers too that that I instantly went and started listening to you guys every week or whatever every two weeks when you guys released did you ever thought about doing them significantly less frequent so like the times that you did them were like higher quality or had more to talk about less prep work less editing like even like quarterly do like a two-hour episode or something like honestly yeah I feel like that was um talked about for sure and uh it's not off the table but um right now it's nice to just take that breather yeah kind of like you were talking about how crazy the summer is and it's not 
crazy bad. Like it's not crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's crazy busy, but busy for a good reason. And I was just actually looking back at like my calendar. I was honestly just trying to figure out a time to have a dinner party at my house with a this couple that I don't get to see often. And by the time we looked at every weekend evening um, between the, you know, the four of us included in a dinner party, it was like, wait, are we on to September until we can see each other again? Like, it's crazy. And I haven't seen them since like last year. Yeah. So to think that like, oh, no Friday, Saturday or Sunday in June, July or August, it works for this one, you know, one set of people. It was just like eye opening. And I was like, wait, I can't even, you know, go camping at a local site with Maria and her boyfriend because we are all so crazy busy and it's just like these things like fill up so fast and also we wouldn't be able to make those types of plans at all if it weren't for the freedom now that we have so it's just like it's crazy to see I don't know like something so simple not happen because you're just busy with other things and it's like I don't, I genuinely don't understand how you guys do it. You have plenty of friends that are having huge life events that of course you need to be a part of. And it's like, you know, when you look at all the things that you're committed to already, uh, you know, your summer's booked kind of thing. And it's just like, um, I'm kind of grateful to have those opportunities again, because the the podcast took a lot Mm of life and time out of us. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, like uh, getting back to my point of like also professionalism, like I, we are very raunchy people and I think it's so easy to find us on our podcast just by like our Instagrams maybe Facebook I don't know if Facebook is even a thing we don't like we don't blast our social media for the podcast and we don't advertise our podcast necessarily that often on our own social medias either so I think like if you really tried to find our podcast you could find it and I think as like for my clients I don't like, I'm very, very PG and very reserved when it comes to like my professionalism. And I think because of my industry, I have to be. And so I don't want my clients or like potential business endeavors, pretend, like having that, having the podcast skew that a little bit and think, oh, like she talks about her pussy a lot. That's <laughs> fucking gross. You know, like we're but not going to do that. On the other hand, it's like, why would you have a, uh, podcast about your friendship and your experiences and then censor it to accommodate for that so it just felt like it didn't work on either end and like I'm happy with the decision that we made but nothing is you know deleted like we've um kind of what's the term disabled our account for now um you can still find old episodes which kind of made me feel weird because like like Maria was saying we did change a lot as people I changed a lot as a person I've become a lot more educated in a lot of things. And I just feel like, wow, you know, me two years ago or last year is like kind of cringy um, to the person I am now. So that's all like, we could definitely um, do maybe reunion and then, you know, think of ideas to talk about and, uh, you know, actually come up with some good content less often. Yeah. Um, but for now, we're just literally trying to live La Vida Loca. Hell yeah. That's all. That's fair. It's almost like like eventually in the future, if you guys aren't as busy, you could do like, oh my God, I look like a pedo sitting back here. Well, Maria does too. So anyway, like it's almost love. like like that was season one of Casey and Maria's life. Like take a break. It's true. Yourself. You know what? Who, That's knows, true, yeah. who knows when it could ever start up again? But it's like season two. Like, where are you guys now? Like successful careers married maybe fucking casey has two kids and a Literally. minivan who the fuck knows it is like a season you're right Watch and her. i i do love that idea i would actually be a good mom i'm not i'm not a complete degenerate but if i if it's not gonna happen naturally i don't know how it's gonna happen at all but uh yeah it's i do like that idea and it's like you know it captured us like figuring shit out and i would love to have our life kind of captured when we do have it sort of figured out mm-hmm. and an update as well like that would be really good um it would be so- really really funny to show maria's kids when you're like 60 you guys talking about your pussy and calling each other cunts yeah <laughs> like, yeah oh i have i have 
all the raw copies. I have the edited copies on a big old um, disc. No, so... bitch, make them listen on Spotify so we can get that bag. We're raw... still making money six years from now. <laughs> uh, it's called royalty. You guys blow up. You guys don't do it anymore. But like for some reason, like all those episodes start catching on like through like the featured uh, tab on Spotify. And you just Hell blow yeah. up. Some kid's going to find it. And be like, what is this archaic comedy? And why is this funny to anybody? I don't know, but I'm going to listen and we're going to get that check. So Hell that's yeah. fine. Well, I always thought you guys were a blast. I hope to do these again. I mean, they don't always have to be raunchy. It seemed like today was more of a heart to heart than a fucking fresh thoughts. But I always do. I always appreciate meeting you guys. It was it's really weird to take two and one that are completely different fucking people put them into a conversation and make things work so I, i've always appreciated you guys and it was always fun being on the pod yeah wow. it's always been a good experience and it's kind of yeah. cool to to gain a friend of you know yeah. via the internet like i know in any oh my other, God. you're our internet friend you in, know. in any other that. situation we wouldn't have um like met you or tried um probably honestly tried as hard as we did for the the bit yeah you kind of inspired us we do have to say greg thank you for inspiring us a little bit to like work harder and like you opened our eyes to like bigger opportunities to like make money and like be more successful in the podcast world we really appreciate that um because it did change things for a long time for us it did like podcast i don't know if it got enough credit that it deserved at the time but like it you truly did help us out in a lot of ways um, whether you knew it or not, I'm sure you did. You literally walked us through a bunch of stuff to get to, to the stage that we were at. So it's kind of dope to like, have had you as such a reliable person, but also now it's like that we can just do this. This is fucking sick. Like, yeah. I don't know. We don't have like a ton of, uh, friends. And if we do, we're very Speak similar. Okay, bitch. I know your contact. <laughs> um, it's just cool to like have, <clears throat> you know, have met somebody and like gotten mm-hmm. to know them when in any other situation we wouldn't have so that's just very cool and we're very grateful to have met you and to have us on this is is great thank you i appreciate it. you guys are fucking funny and you guys have always been funny and there was shit that caught me about you guys before i ever reached out to have you guys on in the first place so i i think that honestly i think approaching each other on the street you guys probably wouldn't like me i might not even like you guys so (laughs) it's just crazy how this is what it takes to to really like get to know someone in like this has always been comedy, but we we know a little bit about each other now and yeah. like each other's lives and the shit that we've went through. And hell yeah. Yeah. I think it's I, cool. <clears throat> I appreciate you guys. I'd ask you what you want to plug, but I don't really think you want to. Yeah. We will go ahead and plug our buttholes and we'll see you later. <laughs> Can't wait to tag your. I'm like, could you out. see that from here? <laughs> um, yeah. No, we're just at our uh, personal Instagrams now. I'm. Uh, yeah. I'm private. So like, honestly, when people follow me, I'm like, I don't know you delete. <laughs> Maria doesn't even use social media. So like, it, Casey, you have a cooking one. I do. I'm at chef case yeah. on Instagram and I'm posting there more often because I'm hopefully there rebirthing my career. So if you ever need private parties or even like cookies decorated for a function or cake, like that's me. That's my passion. As much as I love um, Maria and podcasting, that is my real job um so yeah i do all the things i'm at chef case that's where i follow at chef case yeah that's me for all the best cooking tips hells yeah tips and tits that's me tips Tips and tits tits. all right well i appreciate you ladies (laughs) i appreciate you coming on again it was an absolute blast and i can't wait to do it again thanks Thanks, greg see you bitches bye bye to all our fans (laughs) oh he laughs No, <laughs> I wasn't laughing. He's like, ha, ha, no fans. Oh, Bye. yeah, we're going under a bridge. Okay. <laughs>